We begin with the Knicks trying to stop the city's lost weekend. Ooh. Ooh. November 28, 1969, the New York Knicks going for a record 18th straight victory are down by five to the Cincinnati Royals with 16 seconds to play. And they win. They score six in the final 16. And 25 years later, the game was still considered the greatest blitzkrieg comeback in NBA history. But on Sunday afternoon in New York, the Knicks topped themselves. Oh, how they topped themselves. And oh, how they wish they hadn't. Game one around two against the Pacers. Spikes there, the little Spikester. Then guess who was also there? His friend Reggie, who gets swatted by Oakley. And then by Ewing, Reggie won for his first date, not a factor. Rick Smiths without authority. The Duncan Dutchman living up to his name, kind of a mild dunk. The game got chippy as it progressed. Smiths, Greg Anthony chipped something right there. And then Ewing returns the favor. Two minutes for elbowing. Patrick trying to pretend like he didn't do anything. 59 fouls, an NBA playoff record in the game. Then Mark Jackson behind the back dribble and out to Miller from way downtown. Bang. Pacers leading 73-67. Next possession, Rick Smith, the jumper, John Starks, trying to push Reggie towards a TV career. Moments later, Antonio Davis gets hammered on the offensive board, and a scuffle ensues. Your result? Let's put on the ref's mic, please. We're ejecting Antonio. Wait a minute. Come here, Larry. We're ejecting. We're ejecting Derek. Larry's about to leave for UCLA or something. So Greg Anthony replaced Harper, and Anthony buries a three. Anthony by 15, or the Knicks by 15. Anthony had 15. Under a minute left, Ewing to Mason, the layup, the foul, the Knicks by six. Game over, right? He does get it to Reggie, who squares. Boom, baby! And hits the three from the high left, cutting the New York lead in half. Pacers still need some help. Oh, he threw it away, Reggie for three! Boom, baby! It's a trap all game! Unbelievable! Wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. They foul Starks, he misses both free throws. Ewing gets the rebound, clear shot, he misses. And then they foul Miller on the rebound. Miller sinks both of them. He sinks both of them. The Knicks are down. Last chance, Greg Anthony, no one to go to. He comes not to praise the Pacers, but to be buried by them. Miller loves it. The Pacers and Reggie score eight points in 18. And the Pacers pull out an amazing performance. Forget the Knicks and Royals at the Cleveland Arena in 69. This one was better, unless you were from New York, where the Mets, Rangers, and Knicks all coughed up big leagues in a span of 22 hours. Gah. And says Derek Harper, it looked like a choke, it smelled like a choke, and it felt like a... You have to finish basketball games in this league. You can't take anything for granted, especially with people like Reggie Miller uh, as an opposition. You know, he's very capable, and he showed again today. One of those finishes where you want to be on the good end of it. And so, hey, we stole one. All the pressure's on them. You know, we're loosey-goosey. No one, you guys don't expect us to beat New York. We're the only ones feel that we can beat New York. So all the pressure's on them. We want to be greedy. Um, you know, we felt the real game was going to be on Tuesday anyway. So we got this one. And we're not settling. You know, we want to win two. If we can close this out four nothing. We'll do that. We want. We're a greedy ball club. Did he say choke artist? If any team has ever actually done this, the Knicks are drooling the drool of regret into the pillow of remorse. Rick Smith's tripling Ewing in points and field goals and nearly in percentage. Five times this year, Ewing had scored 13 or less. The Knicks won all five. Not this time. Our breakdown segment is about their breakdown segment. The Pacers have put forth an excellent effort, but it appears as though they will fall short. Looks can be deceiving, but never more so than on Sunday in the Garden. Their top scorer sitting, another player already ejected, down six, and then... Only 18 and 7 tenths to go. Pacers inbound from midcourt. They need three-point field goals. Who do they go to? Who do you think? The Pacers set the play for Miller, although he was 5 for 16 shooting to that point. With John Starks in coverage and Ewing keeping an eye on him, Miller was able to get free behind Anthony Mason. Reggie then had no problem getting and setting for three, cutting the Nick lead 2-3. And then I saw Mason struggling to get the ball in, and he was almost falling out of bounds. You know, I knew we had a shot to get a steal, but I didn't know he was going to throw it right in my hand. Note the spot Reggie goes to. Look familiar? And speaking of familiar, Miller drained another. It went so quick. Uh, you know, he got the three-pointer, and uh, you know, <laughs> I saw him stepping back for another one. But the Pacers made an error in judgment. Sam Mitchell fouling Starks on the inbounds. Normally a 74% free throw shooter, Starks looked more like a 7% guy. John Starks misses two, and that really surprises me. He's one of the better shooters in the league. Ewing made a valiant effort to come up with the board, but missed the jumper in the lane. This place right now is stunned. 
This would be nothing short of a miracle. After the miss, the Knicks did the unthinkable, fouling Miller, 12 of 13 from the line already, underneath the opposite basket, sending the Nick killer to the line for a chance at the lead. Again, no problem. The Knicks were without a timeout, but they still had one last chance. But the Pacers had all players covered, forcing Anthony to take it the entire way. He fell down, no whistle, and that's it! They win it! Can you believe it? Believe it. First weekend in New York since Ray Milan made that movie. For the record, the New York Centaurs of the American Pro Soccer League lost to Montreal 1-0 Sunday, and Manhattan College dropped three baseball games to Iona over the weekend. So since the Met game Saturday, New York, 0-10.